Welcome to Bloom Today. We have a really hopeful show for you today. We're going to be talking about how do I cope with hardship when it causes me to lose my dreams. Hi, I'm Paula Wallace, president of Bloom in the Dark, and this is Ginny Priz, the single-handed serenity coach. Welcome to Bloom Today, where we talk about internal and external brokenness and how you can heal. So that you can use the fertilizer of your past to bloom today. Hey everyone, today we are talking about how do I cope with hardship when it causes me to lose my dreams. Oh. It's not just the hardship. It's yeah. not just the pain of it, the discouragement of it. The, That's hard enough. The hopelessness of it, but oh. then it actually interferes with me pursuing my dreams. Yeah. What do I do with that? Have you ever had that in your life? Oh my gosh. I, well, mine is a little different because I was born with restrictions. What? What restrictions? I don't see any restrictions. Yeah, right. What? <laughs> What's that? This would be the prosthetic, the big old oh, restriction. Oh, oh, that would be a that restriction. I was born with. <laughs> this is how God designed me. This is how He put me together in my mother's womb, and I'm, and I'm handy. I'm all super happy about it. <laughs> Believe me, it is a, it is a true blessing in my life. Absolutely, but it, in many ways, uh, restricted me from even being able to dream in certain directions. When I was growing up, I was a, um, I was a dancer. And so I was three when my mother brought me to my first dance lesson and she brought me in just to observe, to see if I would like it and introduce me to it because she always wanted to dance. Mm -hmm. And now that I had this opportunity, she couldn't keep me in my seat. I was just, let's go, let's go. I wanna dance, I wanna move, I gotta go. Oh, I gotta do this thing, this looks so cool. And she just said, forget it, just sign her up, you know, let's, let's get her in there. And I ended up taking dance classes until, um, Oh, pretty much forever. I still keep dancing, but you know, through high school and, and all of that, I was I was dancing lyrical tap, jazz, ballet, swing dance, belly dance. I can you know do it all. But when it comes do you to dance now, I would no. I'm no, good. Okay. I'm good. I, Just maybe wondering. some other time. That's another show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but what what ended up happening as I got older is it was kind of drilled into me that the idea of being a dancer professionally and carrying on in life was not open to me. That was going to be a closed door. Every little girl dreams about being a ballerina, so they say. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't really want to be a ballerina, but I did want to. I did want to be a dancer, and I toyed with that idea until I realized, oh, modeling and being a ballerina, those are the two things that probably require physical perfection to the point where I don't even have an open door for a viewership. No, no one is even going to see me because I can't extend my arm this way. <laughs> it, it doesn't, doesn't quite work. work. It doesn't work the same. <laughs> it's, no, I, I tried, but it doesn't work. So can you like do rock climbing and, and like outdoor sports like that? Thanks, Paula. Sorry. No, I can't do rock climbing and I don't do, I don't do pull-ups, although that is a choice. I know that, that pull-ups, that's, that's a choice. You could do one-handed. And, right, uh -huh. and if I had a special attachment made for the hand, maybe I might do indoor rock climbing, but outdoor rock climbing, it's totally off the table. I'm just not that strong. It's also not really what I want to be doing. But well, what about musical instruments, playing an instrument? <laughs> yes, let me sit down at the piano. <laughs> Oh, I know violin. Right. Absolutely <laughs> not. No, I again. I could there and there are are women uh, that I've seen and probably men as well who have been able to get uh, specific prosthetics made and they play the guitar and they're amazing and all for it. More power to you. I'm so excited that you did that. That's not the direction that I wanted to go. Actually, when I was in fifth grade, I was playing the um, the French horn because you actually stick your hand up in the right. French horn and that was perfect for this. It was, <laughs> I was built to play the French horn. <laughs> so this little That's tiny awesome. Ginny in fifth grade carrying around this giant French horn. So my that dreams so cool. <laughs> looked a little bit different when I was growing up than yeah, everyone well, else's. How about you? Well, for me, there was um, different kinds of things that came up. Um, I grew up in South America and so right. that automatically gave me a different set of um, third world options as opposed to first world ones. Mm. Um, I went to college in Canada, 
because why not make this, you know, around the world, but... International pop. It is. <laughs> I went to college in Canada, and I ended up getting so ill that I had to drop out, and... Oh, wow. That took uh, my goal and dream of having a teaching license and actually being a teacher in school um, off the table at the time, wow. and God had other plans for me, but during that time, I actually realized that there were some specific um, how-tos in looking for finding hope when mm. you have had dreams specifically taken away, whether it's through illness or right. how God designed you sure. or what country you're in or the different things that interfere in different ones of our lives where we're like, but I wanted to do and now I can't because this interfered, this stole my dream, this mm -hmm. took that away from me. And sometimes it's our own choices, mm -hmm. sometimes it's circumstances, sometimes it's illness, sometimes it's just something out of the blue that destroys things like an accident or some kind of damage. And what I realized during that time is that I had um, three options that actually made a big difference mm -hmm. in how I handled it so that I didn't reach that hopeless place that causes a lot of people to commit suicide, to completely give up, to isolate, to not have anything to live for. Right. And the first one was actually reevaluating mm -hmm. what God's will was for me. Mm. Was the wow. dream I had, for instance, of being a teacher, his best will for me right then? Wow. So when I was healthier and I could go back to school, yeah. um, at that point I had reevaluated, okay, God, where am I in this? And I felt he spoke to me that I was not to pursue that at the time. Hmm. And instead I was to start a business in real estate titles. Imagine that, like wow. so like teaching, right? Left field, okay. Totally different. Um, my dad had that business and taught it to me. And God was like, this is what I want you to do now. Hmm. But what's funny is I actually ended up doing a lot of teaching mm -hmm. and using the teaching training I had within the industry in a business to teach employees how to do, to teach lawyers about mm -hmm. doing real estate title mm -hmm. work, to um, do seminars and things. Yeah. So it's a different way of using that training. Sure. Um, so he prepared you. He put me on a different path, but right. I had to stop and kind of reevaluate, okay, God, why? Right. What do you want me to learn or grow or know right let me take a step this. back and look at the bigger picture and right put it on the altar so to speak yeah it wow, is that takes that takes courage it takes a whole lot Instead of courage of just plow through and i'm gonna <laughs> knock down the door mm -hmm. you said no i'm gonna let's reevaluate and put it back up on the altar absolutely and then the second option was reconsidering mm -hmm. is there another way to go about that same dream okay. so i did that in teaching and using those skills within a business setting Right. So it wasn't a classroom like I had first thought, but that didn't mean that I wasn't using those skills, which I thoroughly enjoyed. And I found out I actually enjoyed it more within a business setting with adults than working with younger children. So God um, knew what he was doing. It fit me better. <laughs> <laughs> and then the third option is actually restructuring. Is there a change I need to make in my plans so that I can go about this same dream in a different way or at a different time? And sure. it's so funny because I wouldn't have thought, for instance, of being on television. Did you? Here we are today. Yeah, but this has become a new opportunity where I get to use things I learned in right. teaching right. to actually share truths and principles um, on television, mm -hmm. which is a very different way of walking in the plan that God has yeah. for me. And Absolutely. that those steps of actually reevaluating and reconsidering and restructuring how and why we do what we do by letting God come in and speak into those places. It's amazing yeah. how we can have healing and growth mm -hmm. and renewed dreams, sometimes new dreams altogether, sometimes Absolutely. a new timing on a dream that we had before, but where we are giving God the opportunity to show us how there's still hope, there's still life, there's still an opportunity ahead of us. Absolutely. There's, and, and sometimes we're on the road and, and we're going and we're thinking, we're set, we got this, we know what's coming next. And then God says, oh, and by the way, there's a left turn ahead. Yeah. <laughs> you go, what? What do you mean? There's a, no, there's, there's a turn, sorry. I know you didn't see it over the hill there, but now we're going this way and we kind of have to come to terms with the fact that, you know, either, whether it's outside circumstances mm -hmm. or internal or consequences, that he still is in control and knows that he can be working in all circumstances, even when they don't look the way we expected them to. 
at all. At, at all. <laughs> and if you want to delve a little bit more into into this topic and right. and really kind of uh, sink your teeth into it, spend some time here and marinate and come to the Lord with this. We've got a coaching tool that you can download on our website, bloomtodaytv.com. And I'm excited because I think this one is going to be uh, really helpful for you, especially if you're in a period where you're not sure uh, where your dreams are, where you're gonna go from here. And I think um, somebody sent me a message that kind of encouraged me when it comes to what Bloom in the Dark is doing and what Bloom Today is doing mm -hmm. and cool. they said um, God showed me through the workings of your book which of course they're talking about the bloom in the dark book bloom in the dark um, through the workings of this book that we truly aren't alone he mm -hmm. showed his face through this in the heart of the matter history truly does repeat itself it's just hidden in the dark a lot of times Ooh. and that leaves us feeling alone and vulnerable which is why we have that book for free on on the website so anybody can actually go download it, read through, and feel less alone in your place of brokenness because you get to actually share some of our testimonies, live through it with us, not just the broken part that's raw and real, but the yeah. healing and redemption that changes yeah. everything. It's all in there. Um, at which our guest today is going to be I know, able so to excited. talk to us a little bit more about this, this idea of when your dreams seem completely lost, what, what do you do and how do you find hope in that place? So I would love to introduce to you a resilient songwriter and mother of three boys who says, dreams that won't fade are meant to be pursued. Mcenna Heydrich, would you please come Yay! on in and join us? Can you us? give her a hand while I um, get yes, her chair I can do her. that. McKenna, here's a hand. Oh, and a hug. <laughs> and a hug. And a hug. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you come for joining us. us. Thank you for having me. I'm so glad to be here. Awesome. Yes. Yes. Love this. All black and sexy. Hey, this and is me. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> and beautiful. Absolutely. Thank you for coming in and sharing with us a little bit. Yes. And I'm so excited because I got to watch your video for your song, oh, Just Keep Living. Yes. And it made me cry. <laughs> me um, too. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still crying. <laughs> and I have three boys like you do and, and yes. watching them on the video and just knowing how mm -hmm. your heart is there in it is so amazing. So I was wondering if you would mind sharing the lyrics with us. I know we're not going to ask you to sing it right now because people <laughs> are going to have the chance to actually go and watch it for themselves right. and listen to it for themselves. But would you mind telling us? Yes. And I wanted to say that I wrote this song with Dove Award winning songwriter Jeff Bumgardner, wow. who just happens to live in my hometown of North Augusta, South Carolina. It's a random thing that happened, but also not random. Right. No. God ordained. Yeah. We right. got together and I got to tell him a little bit about my story and we worked together to write this song and these words just helped me get through on the darkest days. The chorus is just keep living, just keep breathing, just hold on and keep believing. When life is hard and you feel defeated, is something that's worth fighting for. Mm. Just keep moving, just keep trying. And let the heartbreak just remind you that this moment won't define you. You're going to come back stronger than before. Just keep living. It's my anthem. Yes. Because uh, I did come back stronger than before. Which, oh, my gosh. <laughs> we want to hear about the story yeah. of how you did think you had lost your dream and yeah, where what that went. Yeah, what makes this so personal to you? Yeah. Well, it's funny you talked about teaching because that's actually what I did professionally before all of this happened. Um, I was um, very, you know, school oriented and very smart, got my master's degree, was teaching high school English. And, um, but my whole life I felt the calling to be a country music singer and to, um, to share the light through that. Yeah. Um, so I made the really smart decision to quit my job hey. and um, just go <laughs> pursue, pursue music. And um, my husband and I accidentally had three children. <laughs> <laughs> so um, things kind of change a little bit. Um, but it's interesting because when I quit my job, um, my oldest son was very ill and we couldn't figure out what was wrong with him. So while I was working, I was trying to figure out what was wrong with him. Mm -hmm. um, and then I ended up quitting my job for music. But then I ended up through a series of events staying home as a medical caretaker to two of my boys wow. who had been diagnosed with a rare esophageal disease. Wow. And it was a very hard time because... It took four and a half years for a diagnosis. Um, doctors just oh. kind of believed us, but really thought we were kind of not making things up, right. but just kind of being um, dramatic. Um, mm. But we almost lost my oldest son two times. Um, I remember finding him in his crib, 
completely unresponsive, um, oh laying in his own throw up, and oh um, all his eyes rolled back in his head. Um, I remember also holding him one time when he wasn't breathing, and he was, I was nine months pregnant, and he was rolling horizontally trying to catch his breath, and I had the dispatch telling me what to do, and the ambulance was on the way. Um, a couple days later, we had a house fire. Um, oh. We didn't lose our house, but we did lose some things, and it was a hard transition. Um, ended up having a third son. So I had a four and a half year old who had just been diagnosed with a rare disease, which meant a life of hospitals and medical mm. bills and um, surgeries. I had a 15 month old who had just been diagnosed with the same rare disease, but total opposite, opposite symptoms. I had a newborn, a house that had just caught on fire, my husband working swing shift work, and I was alone and depressed and desperate and trying to handle seven hour doctor's appointments and, and no music. And no music. Because honestly, I didn't know how to, for those things to mesh. I was, sure. when I say like my day, waking up in the morning was the hardest thing I did because when I put my feet on the floor, I knew it meant that I, I knew what stood before me in the day. Yeah. And I didn't feel like I had the strength to do it. So who had time to write? Who, who I mean, this was a couple years before I was singing in front of 10,000 people and riding around in golf carts and signing autographs and, you know, living my dream. Yeah. And so now I'm administering medicines and, you know, prepping for surgery, helping my kids through surgery, recovering surgery, two children at a time, driving to specialists, trying to keep them alive, trying to make our life somewhat social. And it just, it was too hard. Yeah. A lot of people lean into music in those hard times, but I was numb. I was different and I didn't wow. process it like that. And so I really thought that my dream was done and that my, my role now was to just keep my kids alive. And that was kind of at the end of the day, if my kids were alive, I'd pat myself on the back. Good job. I'd go to sleep anxiously, knowing yeah. what awaited me the next day. I would get up the next day and try to do it all over again. Sure. And that was my oh, life for that, years. Just hearing that sounds so isolating. Yes. Mm -hmm. You don't have time for anyone to speak in life no. to you because you are so focused yes. on life or death situations consistently. And that's exactly what happened. We became isolated. And because it's an esophageal related disease, mm -hmm. it's kind of hard to say, but it's called eosinophilic esophagitis, or you might see it as EOE for short. It's a food related disease. So when you live in a society where everything revolves around okay. food, um, we no longer knew how to have birthdays because they couldn't have birthday cake. We didn't know how to give cookies for Santa because they didn't eat cookies. So Santa got an avocado or whatever <laughs> specific food they were allowed to eat at that time. Mm. Um, Thanksgiving, we just kind of ate one year. My son was eating, um, he was only drinking a medical formula, so he ate ice for every meal. Wow. So Thanksgiving was ice, you know. What do you do when you have a son who cannot eat? Right. In it's, a culture that is yes. all about food. Food centric. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. What was that, the, the darkest moment for you where you realized that, that somehow God had to come into this? There were a lot of moments for us along the journey when, when your children are touch and go and when yeah. you don't know how you're going to pay your house because you're trying to pay formula and your children are having, two children are having surgery every eight weeks. Oh you God. never know how you're actually going to eat and keep your home. Um, but I specifically remember the day that my second son was diagnosed. I remember it being a low point for me. And actually the song, Just Keep Living, was written about that specific day. So when it talks yeah. about me being on my front porch in the song, that I was on my front porch when the doctor called with the results. And I remember feeling hopeless because we had just gone down that road with my older son and I knew what his life was like, yeah. and I knew how much it had changed our life, yeah. and I knew what it meant if you live with a chronic illness for the rest of your life, something that it can only go away if God chooses to miraculously heal you, which mm -hmm. I believe he can do mm -hmm. and will if he wants to. Yes, amen. Um, but I remember going, and now we have to do this times two. How, this child, how is the second? And then I started fearing for my third child, you know, sure. is this genetic? Are we gonna be doing this with all three of our children? Sure. Um, so that was just a low place for me because it was a reality of our life, feeling like it was never going to change. Right. So then the question is, because I know your story right now <laughs> is not there. It's not, so praise the Lord. Because <laughs> I like myself now so much better. Yes. And I got to meet you at this now, which and that's I awesome. love, love that fact. <laughs> but where did you see hope start coming into mm -hmm. your story when it comes to your dreams? 
Well, this is where I need to give a shout out to my husband, my high school sweetheart. We've been married 11 years and he just, I think it's so interesting that we were high school sweethearts because God started that story a long time ago. He saw me when I was playing festivals in my hometown for four people. He saw me sing in church my whole life. And so he was there for that, you yeah. know? I introduced him to music. He went to his first concert with me. Mm. And um, he knew that I was a different person. He knew that the disease changed me, but he knew that what was missing. And mm -hmm. I didn't have the courage to stand up and, and figure out what was missing. He knew it was music. So he spoke a lot of truth and love in my life mm. and okay. basically told me I wasn't living in purpose and that God created me with a talent and I was wasting it. So now wow. that means, because I know you've had this high speed journey <laughs> yes. since then with lots yes. and lots of faith and lots and lots <laughs> of asking God and lots of recalibrating um, that have gotten yeah. you actually here to Franklin and, and to music in a whole new way. Um, but we want to hear about the charity that you actually are supporting that has to do with some of the brokenness that your kids have experienced with their health. Um, because app fed? Yes. Yes. Okay. So AppFed is a nonprofit organization um, that helps educate people about eosinophilic disorders. Wow. So EOE is one of the disorders. You yeah. don't just have to have the disease in your esophagus. You can have it in other areas of your GI tract. Um, and so it's just kind of my mission to bring light to that organization so that people can be directed there. Um, my hope is that other people who might be struggling with this disease can get diagnosed a lot sooner than us mm. because we struggled for four and a half years a and almost time. lost our son a couple of times to things that we shouldn't have lost him over or you know had that if you'd known right mm -hmm. if we'd known and so I just want people to be directed to this appfed.org because they're so great about educating people about how to get diagnosed mm -hmm. and how to support people that need the support love that that is that. so huge. Please go check them out. Um, and I, I love this, that Just Keep Living, thank you for sharing yes. your story and that this is, a, this is so much a part of your story and yes. that, that place of hopelessness and then how hope and healing comes in when God just shines a light on that. So thank you. Yes. And you have brought a CD today That's as right. well. Yes. Um, McKenna Hydric Ever After. And this is also part of our giveaway. So yes. for those of you who go online, bloomtodaytv.com and download the coaching tool for this week, mm -hmm. you will also be able to uh, get put in a drawing for the uh, Ever After CD. And hopefully you'll be able to um, take this, but you can um, also go online and download this. And now is this, uh, is the song on this one or it's on this the is, new one? This is my um, CD from last year. And okay. so just keep living. You can download on iTunes or Spotify or anywhere that music is sold. And then also my next EP will be coming out hopefully this fall and it's called Wonder Woman because I'm truly ah. embracing this um, theory that through God, I have a supernatural power called the Holy Spirit who gives me the strength to do all of the things that life throws my way. So I truly feel like Wonder Woman with God's help. Well, and you're doing cool. all of this with your music in the midst of still having the children with the still right. the same health problems. That's a good point. We're still having surgery every eight weeks, but we've, we've um, learned how to live in it and live with joy despite it and still pursue dreams. And so my dream is to show my children inspiration, how they wow. are not gonna be held back by their disability. Yes. And they're in your music video. Um, they're in, and so is my husband. Yes. <laughs> so awesome. He's the most handsome man that I could find to, to uh, play my uh, husband uh, as the role. So, <laughs> plus I save money. So. <laughs> and he's a wonderful guy. I've, yes. I've been very happy to get to meet him yeah. and, and see him around. He's and, the best. Yes. <laughs> he's my number one fan. And I think that that's why this works. Mm. We're a team and that's, that's why it works. Because God that. has given you the different pieces you needed to be able to keep on living. Right. This and he started that body. journey back when I was 14 and I saw him playing football and thought he was cute, you know? And that's when it started. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, hey, that's fantastic. Um, you know, when <laughs> high school sweethearts, oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you guys are so cute. It's not all, you know, roses. Of course. But I think it's cool to have that history so that as we go through so much together and as we go through trying to start this career in country yeah. music, um, you know where you've come from. Yes. 
he, he sees the whole picture. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. He knows the whole someone. McKenna. He knows me right. from the whole 14 thing. on. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That's wow. incredible. That's beautiful. So then is there a moment where you feel you felt yourself that you were finally blooming? You were finally coming out of that dark place and blooming in God's presence? Okay, so we've had this dream to move to Nashville for seven years, <laughs> and it literally took seven years. Wow. Um, I think when I moved to Nashville with my three kids, my husband still didn't have a job in Nashville, so he was living back in South Carolina, commuting on the weekends, and wow. I we took this chance to live separately for six months so that I could really get, so I had been traveling to Nashville for years, um, working and recording and writing, but I needed to be here. Um, and I think when we got here, and I felt that, mm -hmm. the peace that we made the right choice, even though it seemed crazy to move to a big old city, coming from a little town in South Carolina yeah. with three kids on my own and trying to, to start this mm -hmm. country music thing. Um, wow. But there was a peace that passed all understanding that we made the right choice and that God was going to make it work. And did you know, just a couple months later, my husband got a great job and now lives in Nashville with us. So God is, is faithful amazing. and he is so good to us. Yes, amen. <laughs> Taking leaps of faith. It's a big, it was a big risk. Yes. And that's not yes. my personality. So to be able to do that and then see God come through for me. Mm, on the other side. Yes, yeah. because he said, do this. And I'm like, I'm scared. But God yeah. said, do it. Trust me. <laughs> you know, uh -huh. I mean, we have this yes. in common, yes. right? Yes, we do. I <laughs> we talk about this at the bus stop. You know, yes. it's like. <laughs> <laughs> I had the same thing, but I had, I had no, um, I didn't have three children mm -hmm. or, or a husband, but I had myself to move with no help getting and down one hand. <laughs> and one hand. And one hand. Like seriously. Yeah, next time you move, you can call us. We have a truck. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Extra hands. Helping hands. Yay, help me. <laughs> Thank you so much for, for coming in, McKenna, and sharing this awesome story. But we want to celebrate with you before yes. you go. OK. You are our mm. ex-victim of the week. Yay. Yay! So thank you so much for just being raw and real with us. And we have yes. some gifts that we want to share yeah. with you. So we have a necklace to match my tattoo. Okay. That way you can celebrate with us on having gone from being the victim of circumstances and loss of dreams and brokenness that comes with that and instead becoming an ex-victim of that That's where right. you bloom. That's why That's the right. flower is. And then, of course, like we have on the table with the chocolates and tissues, mm -hmm. it's kind of a theme of ours. So we got you your own tissues. Oh, you know I need these because I <laughs> cry too much. <laughs> and you get your own little box of chocolates. Ooh. And Thank you so much. That way mm. you have the chance to think of us and join us in all of these parts where we're taking the brokenness, the things that tell us that we're a victim of circumstances, mm -hmm. of behaviors, of abuse, or of whatever it is, and that that's going to destroy us and we don't right. get to thrive and live right. our dreams and whatever. And instead, we get to look at it and go, oh, no, no, no. I'm an ex-victim of all that mess, right. and I'm, I'm trusting no God. In, no longer in that brokenness. No longer in depression. No longer letting disease define our lives. And that, that. that makes you an ex-victim with a bloom. That's yes. why the flower's behind <laughs> it. And so we just wanted to give you this as our little thank, thank you, you so for much. coming on here and helping give thank hope you. to other people because our... our our discussion on the show, our pieces are actually looking at the brokenness of the past, actually going there. So you can use the fertilizer that fertilizer. is actually Gosh, so there's so in much our past. fertilizer in the past, isn't there? So that we can use that fertilizer to actually bloom today. 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 A free PDF copy of the Bloom in the Dark book and a full list of Bloom Today's coaching tools can be found on bloomtodaytv.com. Then visit Bloom Today's Facebook group for deeper conversation.